Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem that was on, my, on a test I did a long time ago. Namely, it's a cool geometry problem that I suggest you try out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally an hour, but not more than two and a half hours. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you give it a go, like draw the diagram and see what the problem is asking you. This is a very cool problem. See what the problem is asking you for the next 15 minutes. And really the only theory you need to know here is really similarity and what's a, what does it mean that it's like a circle with a center? Like what does it mean when two circles intersect? You know, angles at a, on a circle. So with that, here's the, I invite you to pause and here is the next step. Okay, so the first thing we do is we draw a diagram and we have, okay, X, Y, I, and it's not a simple problem. It doesn't seem like a very simple problem. We have AI is AX is AY. And now how are we going to use this fact? Like, how are we going to connect? Mind you, this is a tangent to this. What? What is this? How are we even going to prove this? It seems so difficult and so hard to even come by to like understand how to get close to this. So what do we do here? Well, we first pause, take a deep breath. And then we look at, okay, what do we actually have? So let's calculate some angles. Like we, I don't think we have this angle X here. Let's call this angle X, but let's see what we get. So because this is equal to this, we get this angle is also X. Like this is X and X. So this is X. Okay. This whole thing is 180 minus beta. So this is beta. So this is here, beta minus X. And now we have this angle here is beta. And analogously, this angle right here is gamma. And with that, I invite you to pause for another, you know, five to 15 minutes and see if you can push the problem further. Because here's the next thing, mind you, because this is gamma, this is beta. This means that if we label these other two points, this D and E, that means that B, E, D, C is concyclic. And this is something we did not know beforehand. I don't know if this is always the case it might be the only thing we really used so far is the fact that what's it called is that ax is a y we did not use a i is equal to these at all and this is also important sometimes to keep track because usually not always but usually the problems like every single thing that's a condition is used and it's usually important to keep track of which conditions you're using so here we use the fact that this is equal to this and now my question for you is, say DE was actually tangent to this in circle. What would that make the in circle for the triangle ADE? Mind you, this is a unique triangle such that this is like these are concyclic or this is anti-parallel to this with respect to this angle and that this is tangent to the in circle on this side. There's another one here. That's tangent to it, but this is a unique line. So with that, I invite you to think, what does it mean if this was tangent? So that's one, one route that I want you to go. This is solving the problem backwards. Solving the problem forwards is what else do we have from this AX is AY is AI? What do we get? And I invite you here to pause for the next you know, 10 to 15, even 20 minutes and see if you can push the problem further. Because here's the next step. Namely, what we have from AX is AY, we get, okay, this is X and we get this is X. Now what do we get? We get AXD and ACX are similar because of the angles when you have X and X. Or in other words, AX is tangent to XDC to that circumcircle. And so now we know that AX squared is equal to AD times AC which we also know is equal to AE times AB. And we also know this is also equal to AY squared, right? All of these things are equal to each other. But we haven't used the fact that AX and AY are equal to AI. So AX squared is AI squared. And now this is a common, like somewhat commonly used in problems. When you have a tangency and another point here, such that this is equal to this, like this tangency thing, 
you can then get some new angles from here. And what do we get from here? Well, we get that AI squared is AD times AC. So that means that AI is tangent to the circumcircle around DIC. Now, mind you, what would I be if it was, if this DE was tangent to the in circle of ABC? Well, I would be the center of the X circle opposite A in the triangle ADE. And that's a very well defined point. It's a point here. And we call, usually call this point J. And we know all the angles for J. Namely, we know this angle is beta half and this angle is gamma half. So what would it mean for this if it was, if I was the X circle opposite A? Well, like the center of the X circle opposite A. And the reason we, that, that matters is because this in circle is already tangent to AD and AE. And you need to prove it's tangent to DE. Right? XY is distant, DE is closer to the action. So that's why it makes more sense. We can always go back to X and Y. But now, when we take advantage of this fact that AI squared is AD times AC, this is also important. This uniquely defines points D and E, right? This condition right here, AI squared is AD times AC, that uniquely defines the points D and E, and also this condition right here. And so we can all like forget about X and Y completely and just focus on D and E because it's much closer. It has much more to do with this sort of tangency condition. X and Y seem a bit more distant, more far apart. And that's why it's important to focus here. And with this in mind, what do we have? We have that this angle right here is equal to this angle right here because of this tangency condition. And this is gamma half. So this is gamma half. And this angle here is beta half. And with this, I invite you to pause for another 10 to 15 minutes and see if you can push the problem further. And here's the next step. Namely, what does it mean now that we have the angle? We have the angle, what is D I E, ha, die, is equal to what? It's equal to 90, my, uh, 90, I think, yeah, 90 minus alpha half. And this is on the angle bisector of EAD. And now, what does this mean? This uniquely defines the X, X center opposite A, the X circle, yeah, the center of the X circle, or the, yeah, the center of the X circle opposite A in the triangle ADE. It uniquely defines it, that this angle is on this side, and 90 minus alpha half, and that's what's it called, that it's on the angle bisector. Another way of proving this fact would be to introduce the in center of the triangle AED, and let's call that IJK, so K, and then we would have that this angle is what? This would be 90 plus alpha half, right? And I think with that, we would know that this angle right here is equal to this one. And then we would have that this angle is going to be, what, 90 plus beta half. And with that, we would be finished. Like we would complete the proof that this is, in fact, the center of the circle of this, of the X circle opposite A in the triangle ADE. Now, because, now how do we prove that the in circle of ABC is in fact the X circle? Well, it is because it touches these two points, like these two lines, AE and AD, AE and AD. And so we know that it touches the line ED as well. Ergo, ED is tangent to the in circle. Ergo, XY is tangent to the in circle of ABC, which completes the problem. I like this problem a lot, and here's why. It seems like a very difficult problem when you read it. X, Y, tangent to the in circle? Like how do you connect points on the circumcircle with the in circle? That just seems very difficult, right? I, to me, at least, it seems very difficult. But if you like take it step by step, you take a deep breath, take it step by step, 
you see, oh, these points are in fact good to focus on. And then you're closer, like it's easier to connect points on the triangle with the in-circle than points on the circumcircle with the in-circle. And then you see this, okay, this uniquely defines and uses everything I need to know about DNA. I, I can reconstruct X and Y later. And then you see, okay, what, will, what would I be? Not what would I be, what would I, the point I be? And you see, oh, it would be this X center opposite A. And then you say, okay, what do I have from the condition? And from the condition, you see that you have, okay, this here thing right here is going to be gamma half and this is beta half. Okay. Now, is, and then you go back and say, is this enough? I have, it's on the angle bisector. I have this angle and you realize it uniquely, it's uniquely defined in this way. And so you are done. Now, this finishes up our problem. I like it a lot. I hope you enjoyed this problem as well. I hope you learned something. And as always, thanks for problem solving.